Hello, I'm Frank Korb. This is a quick instruction on how to use grids and ratios to transfer an image from a, one surface to another. Now, this image here is not me. This is by far a, a much, much greater artist than I'll ever be, Chuck Close. And if anybody's face could be used to uh, demonstrate the use of grids and ratios, it would be Mr. Close's. He was a, is an artist who uses and has used the grids to do his own portraits uh, for decades. So this is Chuck Close. Thanks, Mr. Close. I appreciate your assistance in our demonstration. Today what we're going to do is we're going to do a one-to-one -one ratio using grids. So to start with, what I'll do is take a ruler and across the top, I am going to mark off one inch marks. Let's kind of move this over here. Get this. So I'm going to do one inch, two, three, four, five, and six. I don't have to mark because it's at the edge. I'm going to slide my ruler down and mark it off one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then what I'll do is I'm going to turn my paper and mark it off. One, two, three, four, five, and six is already marked off. And I'm going to slide my ruler down, make sure my zero is at the edge, make sure it's square. I'm going to mark it off. One, two, three, four, five, and six. It is zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully line up my marks, put my pencil at one point, slide my ruler to mark it, and right on the photograph, I'm going to make my line. A little off on that bottom one. There's one. Make sure it's square. Get it lined up. There's two. Continue. Three, and then I'll continue four and five. And then I'll do the same thing. And I'll turn my paper. And I will mark it off. Hold my pencil here. One. Oh, got to straighten that out. There's my one. Going to continue to line things up. Two. Three. And I'm going to continue doing that until it is all drawn out into a grid. Then what I'm going to do, and let me bring in my next piece. So I've got this part gridded. And this is a preview of what it'll look like. Look at that. There's the grid all laid out there. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing to my blank piece of paper. I'm teaching a one-to-one -one ratio. So one image is exactly the same as another. Now this technique could be used to go 1 to 2 or 1 to 12 or, or whatever you'd like to do, but this is the basic technique. So I'm going to again grid this piece of paper off just the same way. I'm going to line this up, make a mark at 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and I'm going to slide my ruler down. I'm not turning my paper because if my paper is not square, then my grid is going to be crooked. And I don't want to be a crooked grid. One, two, three, four, and five. And then I can draw those connecting lines. Put my pencil down here. One, two, whoops. There we go, so you can see it. Three. Got my lined up. Four and five. Okay, and then I'm going to turn my paper sideways, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark that off at the top. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to slide my ruler down, do the same thing at the bottom. 
one, two, three, four, five. And then of course I would connect bump, 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 bump until I get a piece that looks like this. So this is my grid. You can also see that across the top, I've labeled it A, B, C, D, E, and F. And along the side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. If you're doing this in the classroom or in your studio or, or at home for that matter, this might be a good place to pause, rewind, double check it, and go ahead and grid your things off so that your drawing, your, your picture plane, is set up to, uh, to do that. What we're going to do next is going to begin transferring that first image up to this gridded piece of paper. So if you need to pause, go ahead and pause right now. Hey, welcome back. So what we've got here is my beautiful portrait of Chuck Close. I'm going to assume that it was made by Chuck Close. And I have my gridded piece of paper. Now one thing that you notice from the original in comparison to my second one is I've begun to simplify things and for, for my sake and for the purpose of what we're going to be doing in my art studio, we're going to be simplifying things. Now this does not mean that you have to draw lines around shapes to help define it. You can simply look at things like Mr. Close's face and deal with the values, the soft shadows and the values that are in there. And that's one way to do it. If you look at Chuck Close's early work, that's exactly how he did it with an airbrush. He would look at the soft values and grid by grid, square by square, he would transfer things up. For our sake, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a simplified version. So other artists um, individuals like Alex Katz, who doesn't use a grid like this, but he does use portrait, he simplifies shapes. Uh, other artists like, uh, oh, Frank Korb, for example, his work uses very big shapes like this, and, and he does not grid it either. He does it freehand. What a talented man. I hear he's really handsome, too. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to look at what's happening in square 1A, so 1A, and actually, before I do this, I would take something like a Sharpie marker. And it doesn't have to be a Sharpie. They're not paying me anything for my time here. But a black felt-tipped pen. And I can outline some of these larger shapes. So if you're doing this in studio and all you get done in one sitting is the grid, that's great. If you're ready to move on, then you can take that Sharpie marker or any other felt-tip permanent marker, or whatever you're using, Pencil would work just fine too, I suppose. And start to simplify by finding these larger, important shapes and outlining those. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to begin transferring one square at a time. What I might do is if I wanted to simplify it even more, I could take a viewfinder. I don't have a viewfinder made, but I could take individual sheets of paper and I could simplify this square. Where's another piece of paper? There we go. I could take another piece of paper and create a viewfinder. So now this is even simpler to look at. So what's happening in square 1A? Well, gosh, that's really easy. I've got this line that does oh, about that. Not quite that. There, that's a little bit better. Notice that my lines aren't perfect to start with. I'm, by the way, using a B pencil because it's hard. It doesn't blend. It's a, it's a good pencil to start with. Then what I could do is I could move down to square A2. And taking another piece of paper, and maybe at some point I, I could make myself a one-inch viewfinder and I can transfer this space. So what happens in square A2? Well this line comes down, bends a little bit. There's another line here that I've drawn in with my black fine tipped marker and then this line curves up 
and over. It's not a lot in this particular square. So I'm going to try a different one. And that's the nice thing about the grid, is I can work anywhere within my picture plane, and it's going to work just fine. Let's find this square. So this square is D2, and I'm going to block D2 out. Do you have to use the viewfinder? No, you don't have to use a viewfinder. You can if you'd like, if you just want to take some scrap paper and do that. So like I said, this was square D2, and this is a little bit more complicated. So let me get D and 2 in my view here. Very good. So D2, there's a line that comes in here. I'm going to lightly sketch that in. There's a line that comes in here. And this is going to come across, kind of dip down a little bit, and come up. I'm paying attention to where the lines in uh, come into my square. I'm paying attention to where the lines exit my square. It's a very dramatic curve here. There's this little loop that comes in about here, dips down, bends up. This line curves over here. If I may be, if I'm able to simplify this, that's a shape. I mean, this square took me one, two, three, four, five lines to define this shape. And it's a really quite complicated image. So this is how one would go about this process. I don't have time right now to finish and, and show you a finished drawing, but that's how one goes about this process. I'll do one more square for you without the viewfinder. I'll do C2. So I'm in C2. And this is important because now I can see where this line exits and joins up with what's in C2. So here is C2. This comes up from here and intersects here. I am treating this one square at a time. I know this is his eye, but I'm not going to look at it like an eye. I'm just looking at it like a shape. And so I can, I can do all of this intense, what otherwise seems very difficult drawing, with just a few lines. I'm also not worried about making it perfect, because our drawings are, well, they're, they're made by humans, and as far as I know, us humans are anything but perfect. I mean, there's a few of them out there that are pretty close, but uh, I'm certainly not one of them. Um, and so that's, gosh, that's almost enough. I've got, uh, let's see, this line comes in here, I feel like I forgot something here. Oh, no, that's that one right there. Oh, boy. I got something wrong in this piece. There we go. That does that. So even I can get confused a little bit. There's the bridge there. That comes in here. This line does a little bit of this. There we go. That's better. So you can see now this drawing is going to start to come together. At the very least, the goal for this video was to help you figure out how to, one, draw the grid over your photograph, and two, draw the grid onto your blank piece of paper, and then C, to start to transfer it up from one to the other. Any problems? Any questions? Go ahead and rewind this. If you've uh, got any comments to make, please make them on the YouTube page. I appreciate it. Again, this is Frank Korb. These are grids and ratios. Thank you, Mr. Close. I do appreciate all of your, uh, your hard work and your inspiration. Take care.